Well, good morning and welcome to Spring Valley Church. I'm glad to have you for worship this morning. Would you all bow your heads as, as we prepare for worship this morning? Dear Lord, we thank you so much for who you are, for your um, for blessing us with your presence this morning. We just welcome you into this place. We pray that you would meet with us here and that the, the praises that we sing would be pleasing and glorifying to you. It's your name that we pray. Amen. Amen. Would you all stand with us this morning and join us as we sing songs and praise and worship?
Amen.
praise to you that we're never alone. And no matter what we're going through, that we can always turn to you and that you're always walking through it with us, Lord. We praise you for that. We thank you for that. It's your name we pray this morning. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Well, again, good morning. Welcome to Spring Valley Church. I uh, just have a few announcements to bring to everybody. Again, we're glad you're here with us. Uh, just as a reminder, next week we'll be outside. Uh, we've been doing outdoor services throughout the summer. And next week is our final week doing so. Uh, so August 29th, we'll be outdoors. Bring a blanket, bring a chair, whatever you want to sit in. We'll be back in the grass out there. Uh, it's a fun uh, way to switch it up and uh, enjoy nature and hopefully some sunshine while we're out there. So uh, we look forward to that and hope you can join us for that. Um, mark your calendars for Sunday, September 12th because we have kickoff Sunday. Uh, it's the week where we're going to start uh, doing youth group and small groups and things like that. Uh, we'll have some more information on various groups coming up. Um, but we'll also have a picnic and things like that out in the green. We're going to provide food this year. We're going to have a choral tournament again. So uh, it's going to be a lot of fun after church. Uh, it'll just be the uh, same place we're having outdoor worship next week. So mark your calendars. You don't want to miss September 12th. Um, likewise, September 18th, we're going to have a night of worship uh, here. And it's going to be super fun. Just a, a time to uh, sing some songs uh, together. And, and just spend a lot of time in worship. So I'm very excited for that. It's Saturday, September 18th. Uh, earlier that day, we're also going to have a car show out uh, in the parking lot. Um, so if you want to uh, come for that, which is at 3 o'clock, right? Um, so uh, it's, it's not something we're putting on, but we're, we're kind of hosting it. We did it last year, uh, and it was a lot of fun. So they're also going to have a kickball tournament. Uh, so we need some volunteers for that. And so if you want to um, be involved in that, uh, let us know, and uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, also, mark your calendars for uh, next March 2022. We, we will be having the Mission Dinner Auction. And uh, like Rob said last week, the reason we are announcing it so early, we're not going to hit you with it every week, but we want uh, to just make people aware if you see some good deals for things that uh, you would use out in the lawn or during the summer. Uh, those are usually big ticket items, so that would be uh, an awesome thing for you to grab so that we can uh, have them uh, for the auction next year. Um, so, uh, as we uh, transition into our message this morning, would you all bow your heads in prayer? Do Lord, thank you this morning for who you are, for meeting with us, and uh, we just praise you and, and glorify you for who you are. We thank you so much. And this morning, we pray that you open our hearts, open our ears as we uh, receive a message from you this morning. Amen. Amen. Good morning again. Hey, I have a note here. The car show actually starts at 11 o'clock. So it's 11 until 3. All right. So if you want to come to that, um, that'd be awesome. It's, it's actually really cool. Last year, it's, it was a fun deal. Uh, and, and to go off of what um, Jordan said, there's actually sign-ups out there for the, for the Cornhole Tournament. So get signed up. Um, and uh, for the kickball, helping, there's just signs for all this stuff. So um, I believe there's also a golf hunting schedule in October. There's so many announcements right now, we're just trying to you know, narrow in here a little bit. There's a lot of stuff going on and coming up, and it's all good and fun and exciting. One way to always get that is to be subscribed to our email list. Uh, every Saturday, Andrew puts out an e-blast that has all this stuff there, so you can always reference it that way as well. Well, we are continuing our series on uh, the Ten Commandments. So we already are all the way up to number six, and this one is really short. If you're into memorizing scripture, uh, this, this is a one that you should be able to memorize pretty quick. Exodus 20, verse 13. You must not murder. Perhaps you grew up hearing, thou shalt not murder. It's another way of phrasing that. Pretty direct, pretty simple, at least in perception. You think of people like John Wayne Gacy, uh, Hitler, Stalin, um, the 
list goes on, what do you think of, of those sorts of people? Murder, right? The murder of, of innocent, of human life. I want to share with you that that sort of idea that maybe comes to our mind when we hear thou shalt not murder, we maybe think of people like that. We think of events like that. And just a reminder, the context of all of this is a new day. God is giving direction to these freely, newly freed slaves from Egypt, giving them boundaries and principles of how to do life again, the new way to do life. And last week, you know, we talked about honoring our parents, we talked about the Sabbath, we talked about having no other gods, all these things, they, they make this question, as, why, why does this make the list, why does that make the list, what's the significance of it, and how, how do we really live it out? I mean, uh, can we be done with this sermon in about three more minutes? You know, if I just ram home the fact, don't go kill anybody. Is it as simple as that? Is that really all there is to the Sixth Commandment? Well, not quite. Certainly, the simple approach, that simple meaning of don't go and murder somebody is true. But there is more to it. Uh, there are seven different Hebrew words that could be used for the concept of death murder. And the one that's used specifically in this passage, which isn't used very often in the Old Testament, is a word that in some of your Bibles may have even translated this way, a word that actually better is um, translated as the word kill. Do not, or excuse me, yet yeah, do, do not kill is often in our scripture, but the actual word has more to do with murder. The difference between murder and killing. So what I would like to do is bring us through a couple of places in Scripture that help us to have a better um, grasp of what is really being said here. What, how does this play out? How does this affect the way we live? And to do that, I want to bring us right back to the beginning in the book of Genesis. And looking at Genesis chapter 1. Verse 26. Then God said, Let us make human beings in our own image to be like us. They will have reign over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky, the livestock and all the wild animals on the earth, and all the small animals that scurry around the ground. So God created human beings in his own image image in the image of God he created them male and female he created them and so the first point we need to recognize this morning is that part of the reason why God takes so seriously murder is because there is value to all of humanity and the value is rooted in the fact that all of humanity is made in the very image of God. That connection demands a certain kind of respect. That when we are hurting humanity, the image of humanity, we're actually blemishing and scarring and, and attacking God himself disgracing God's creative order, God's very creation. We get our self-value, our self-worth, not by anything that we accomplish or experience in this world. We receive our value in the fact that we are actually image bearers of God, which is something we should feel really good about. That that our, our self-worth, our self-esteem, all those things are rooted in the fact that we're, we are image bearers of God. And in that light, we're, we're called to show a certain kind of respect 
for, for one another. So that's, that's the first idea and point we need as a backdrop going into this. But we also need to turn to the New Testament where we grab great insight, further understanding into this lesson and this idea. And to do this, um, I want to read from Matthew chapter 25, verse 21 to about 26. This is Jesus' sermon. And he says these words. So you have heard that our ancestors were told, you must not murder. And if you commit murder, you are subject to judgment. But I say, so this little use of phrase that Jesus is using, employing here, you have heard it said, but I say, is used both in other uh, historical accounts and other times by Jesus himself. And essentially what he's doing is, you've come to understand this teaching this way, but this is what it really means. Um, you, you've known in part, but I am here to tell you, to explain to you what it really means. And once again, we have to look at some context. This is a situation where the Pharisees are questioning the teachings. They're, they are the authority of the law. They are the authority of God's word, the Old Testament. They are the instructors. And now you have Jesus coming in, proclaiming to be the great rabbi, the great teacher, and saying not only to the congregation, if you will, but to the very pastors, preachers, teachers, scholars, the Pharisees, Sadducees who are there, look, he's basically saying to the people, but really knowing the Pharisees are listening, look, you, you've heard it said from those guys, this, but listen to me. I know the will of the Father. This, this is what it really, really means, okay? I only share that because I think it brings great drama to this. I mean, imagine being on that hillside watching this unfold. So, but I say, if you are even angry with someone, you are subject to judgment. If you call someone an idiot, you are in danger of being brought before the court. If you curse someone, you are in danger of the fires of hell. So, that changes things a little bit, doesn't it? People are, up to this point, assuming that as long as they refrain from murdering somebody, they've completed the demands of the Sixth Commandment. Jesus says, no, 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 no. That, that's principle, but the spirit, the practice of this commandment is much, much different. As a, a whole different level. He understood that a lot goes into the decision to commit murder, and that none of that is okay. Being obedient to this command is, is not simply avoiding physical harm, uh, not avoiding physically harming someone, but actually guarding against the violence in our lives. So, now things get a little bit more difficult. Now things take on a, a whole different sort of bent and spirit. I believe Jesus would be saying to us something along the lines of, we should be just as concerned about our attitudes that people don't see as about our actions that are seen by all. That we should be just as concerned about our 
our attitudes, our internal stuff, as it should be about our external actions. Now, I will freely confess to you this morning that, like many of these commandments, this is one that I struggle with. You know, the New Living Version says, if you even call somebody an idiot, you have committed the principle of murder. I'm pretty sure I've called somebody an idiot within the last 48 hours. In fact, I know I have. In fact, I constantly struggle with people who are bad drivers. Sometimes I call them idiots. Sometimes I call them much worse. Sometimes I say it out loud. Sometimes I physically show them an expression of it. Sometimes I just say it in my heart or I mumble it under my lips. It's your pastor, all right? I'm real, it happens. That's why we have these Sundays. Not, not just for me, but we forget the simple truths of the Bible. Of the text. We need to be reminded. You know, we go through life feeling like, you know, if I don't do the biggies, if I, you know, if I don't cheat, if I don't steal, and I don't have, you know, an affair, you know, whatever the thing those biggies are, I'm pretty much okay. But the teaching of Jesus is that the, the way it's supposed to be to have this better life that brings glory to God and makes life much better for us are a lot of other things, a lot of littler, simpler sort of things, like our attitude, like the words we say to people. And I want to challenge all of us this morning to uh, think a little bit more seriously about the way we do that, about the words we both say externally and the thoughts we have internally. That if they were said, would violate this. Because the truth is, when we think them, we are already committing the act. That's what Jesus is saying. That's a whole lot different than going out and literally murdering, shedding blood. And Jesus is saying that we shed blood symbolically when we even think these things. So we may be thinking right now, well, who could possibly overcome that? Who, who could possibly have certain things done to them and not have this retaliation response? It's so natural, it's so hard not to. And the answer to that is none of us. None of us on our own are able to live up to this standard. That it is only by the grace of God working in our lives that we begin to respond and even think differently. And that's, that's a long process, isn't it? That's a hard thing to sort of uh, um, accept and, and, and grow, grow into. Jesus is saying that, that anger and hate toward our brother is like murder in our heart. The good old Heidelberg Catechism that we used the first week of this series expands it in this way. Quoting the Heidelberg Catechism, it says, By forbidding murder, God teaches us that he hates the root of murder. Envy, hatred, anger, um, vindictiveness. In God's sight, all such 
are disguised forms of murder. It's like there's a bunch of secret serial killers among us. This disguised form of murder is rooted in envy and hatred and anger, in unrighteous anger. Last night, uh, Tammy and I had the privilege of uh, attending a wedding. In fact, it was a member of our church. Uh, Toby and Jody Vanessa's son, Chris, got married yesterday. And the reason I'm sharing that was a, it was a great time, it was a great celebration, a great young couple. They just seemed so happy and so clueless and, you know, about the future, you know, all that stuff, young love, goodness. Uh, the reason I share all that, though, is because something happened last night that was really cool. Um, we have a, we have that connection because you know the Vanessas with our church and everything. But uh, Jody Vanessa's brother is our kind of our neighbor. He lives a little further down the street. Lives in our neighborhood. And I went to high school with Jody, so you know her brother's a little older. And just through weird acquaintances, we've gotten to know them better this last year-ish. Um, camping in Pentwater and stuff's been a big part of this. Just sort of weird things, but just sort of a delightful family. But most of the family I hadn't met before, Tammy hadn't met before. Last night, we, we got put in the center of, of that family. And there's four brothers and then the one sister, Jody. And, uh, you know, I, I don't want to make too much of this, you know, it's not, it's, this is an emotional thing. It was just sort of one of those, wow, kind of moments. And the wow part that I'm trying to communicate to you, probably not doing a great job, is that we experience a certain kind of hospitality, kindness, that I, I just haven't, in a long time, Maybe, you know, just each one of those brothers wanted to come up and make sure that we knew them and that we were welcome there and, and just sort of, um, I don't know how to say it other than it was great. You know, we were kind of the, not the strangers in the room, but we were, you know, the, the pastor's wife always got to get invited and they could sit at a certain table, you know, and all that kind of stuff, but that's not the way it was last night. It was sort of like, I don't know, almost a little bit of like, um, you're our guest and we want you to, we want you to feel kind of special, almost. We were included in the conversation, we were, you know, all that stuff. And, and here's the part that I really, really trying to get at. We were leaving, we were walking out, and Tammy and I were um, just kind of, you know, walking down the stairs back to the parking lot. And she looked at me and she said, I feel like we made new friends tonight. And I was like, yeah, they were strangers, but they feel like friends. I think what we experienced last night is the opposite of what it means to murder. I think what we experienced last night is the design and purpose of what Jesus desires about the way we interact with each other. And the reason I feel that way is because Jesus, later in John's Gospel, gives us even further insight into this teaching in this passage. I'm reading from John chapter 13, verse 34. He starts by saying this, so now I am giving you a new commandment. You've perhaps read this before. Have you ever thought of it in light of the fact 
that there are ten commandments. And Jesus says, so now I'm giving you a new one, which I don't think is a small affair, right? I mean, Jesus is saying, look, there's a new one. This, this, is, this is brand new, breaking news. This, is, this isn't what you had before. Pay attention, listen. The Son of Man, the Savior of the world, is going to tell us a new commandment. For thousands of years there's been these ten. I'm giving you a new one. And so now I'm giving you a new commandment. Love each other just as I have loved you. You should love each other. Your love for one another will prove to the world that you are my disciples. A new commandment to love one another, not just any way, but as I have loved you. Well, how did Jesus love you? Clearly, it's a sacrificial love. It's a love of great sacrifice. Now think about this. Even if you call someone an idiot, idiot, love one another. They don't go together, right? Even if you hold hatred in your heart, hatred, love one another, they don't go together. We've said that the Ten Commandments are kind of compartmentalized into two sections. There's, there's the first four that have to do with our relationship with God, and the next six have to do with our relationship in the world and humanity. Jesus says, when asked, what are the greatest commandments? To love the Lord God, with our mind, soul, and strength, and the second is like to love one another. And then he says, I'm giving you a new commandment. The way you love one another is to do it the way I love you. You see, love is it's more than simply warm feelings. Love reveals itself in action. How can you love others as Jesus loved us? By helping even when we are too busy. By giving sacrificially. By devoting energy to others' welfare rather than our own. By absorbing hurts from others without complaining or fighting back or seeking revenge. These are just a few examples. But this kind of love is hard to do, is it not? But that's precisely the reason why people notice when you do it. I don't think the Mindor family last night were seeking any intentional way. Like, I don't think they got together at Grandma and Grandpa's house and said, look, tonight we're going to show the Wonder Gems what it means to be loving. I think it's the way they are. It's what's in their heart and it overflowed to just, just sort of who they are. They just were graceful people. They were just kind. We saw it in uh, their parents, 89 and 85 years old, were the exact same way. Grandpa Mindorf, Tammy never met her, gave her a big old hug before we left. This is a little bit freaky, a little weird, but you know what? We know what he meant. We know it was right. We know it was just an act of, of we're glad you're here. Today's message, you guys, is not ground, you know, breaking or shattering or anything like that. I don't have a big theological bomb to drop. But sometimes the small and the simple details of God's instruction are the easiest to miss and maybe the most powerful when they're made real in our living. Jesus says, if you do this, if you love one another, if you try to love one another the way that I loved you, the world will know that you are my disciples. The, the world will see the character of Christ 
in your lives, they will take notice. Are you living a life that others are taking notice of? Are your words and your thoughts life-giving or life-taking, i.e. murderous? Jesus says, you've heard it this way, but the truth is, it's much different. The very way you think matters. And I want you to be thinking about loving one another the way I loved you. I believe if we do that, the world will see and believe that Jesus is real and there is hope for this world. May we all strive this week to be that kind of people. Amen? Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you once again for the teaching of your word, for the instruction that it gives us, the life that it gives us. And now, Lord, help us. Help us in the midst of those heated moments, in the midst of others lashing out at us, in the midst of, uh, of daily occurrences, to think differently, to live differently, and to love like you've called us to love. We thank you for that love. We thank you for the uh, unfathomable sacrifice that you bore, that you took on our behalf. Lord, we pray that the world would know that we are your disciples by the way we love one another, by the way we avoid acts of murder, whether in word or deed. We pray, Lord, that you would be glorified we pray that you would be pleased with your children. And we pray for your help. In the name of Jesus, amen. Would you all stand and sing with us?